And hello, uh, this is our uh, podcast, our newest podcast. Um, I'm uh, Marshall Goldsmith, Certified Executive Coach, Randy Swaim, and the founder of Coaching for Relevance. And as uh, most of the listeners have uh, uh, have heard, I'm also a founding fellowship partner for ION, the Institute for Organizational Neuroscience. So leadership is a big thing. We want to welcome you to this uh, podcast. And I will tell you that uh, my guest for today is a gentleman that he and I have had some uh, neat conversations uh, with. I'm glad to have him on. His name is Dennis Burroughs. And Dennis, welcome. And uh, if you will, take just a, a couple few minutes and just kind of introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your journey and kind of where your passion is on uh, on being on the show today. So thank you, Randy. Thank you for having me. Uh, sure, it's been a pleasure to meet you and talk to you and just kind of talk about around the uh, a lot of different topics if you don't meet very people many people who can have that conversation and with your it's background always, it's ahead. always val- it's always valuable when you do meet them don't, isn't it i yeah, it feel is. the same about you <laughs> it is and and coming from aviation uh which you have a background in as well um you know i i consider that aviation people are some of the smartest people in the world so um if someone ever comes up with a TV show about aviation, they'll make a billion dollars. I mean, you just never know. But uh, from my background, uh, I actually started out as a law enforcement officer in the military. And uh, after my first four years, I just wasn't fulfilled. I I wanted to go to college. I hadn't gotten to college yet. I wanted to learn. I wanted to do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff was in my head. And uh, I met a tech sergeant and he basically guided me and mentored me to where I actually went in and took my entry level test over again, my score raised. So now that opened up a whole bunch of things for me. Oh, wow. Cool. So um, first I wanted to be a paramedic, but then I found out that I'd just be changing bed sheets for about four years before I <laughs> got to give anybody a shot. So, yeah. um, so that didn't work. And then there was aircraft electrician. Um, and that electricity, I was always interested in electricity. My father taught me how to build lamps when I was little. I knew how to troubleshoot. So um, what I would do is every day I'd get off of work of being a, a, a law enforcement officer and I'd go down to the hangars and the guys in the hangars were more than welcome to have me down there. So for about a year, I studied all the books. I go down the hangar, look at the airplanes and um by the time I got to my second enlistment, I was already ready to just go to tech school. And when I got to my first base, they didn't even want me to go because I'd already knew everything, but I had to. Yeah. So I went through that process. And uh, once I got out, I came down here to Dallas and I started started exploring things, working for Boeing for a little bit. And then next thing I know, I'm on Love Field. I'm working big, big airplanes. I'm learning a lot more. Cool. But I still had that burn for got to get some formal education some kind of way yeah so a number An in- of years, interesting well, insight for sure yeah so a number of years went by and um, i finally wound up going to college and that's when things really changed um i went for business management and then i did my master's in business administration right after i got done with my bachelor's mm-hmm. and i was just intrigued about all the stuff that I was now being released and I got my aha, and now we're starting to look for places to use it. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I wound up sending a guy an email that I've been working with at a, at a big corporation because I was still in the hangar working on airplanes and yeah. make, making it happen, you know. And um, I, I, it was a guy that was a, a tech rep from a, a big company, and I, I just sent him an email and said, hey, you know, I just graduated from college. You know, I haven't seen you in a while. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, I got an email that says, hey, you want to come over here and be a tech rep and, you know, do that? So I was like, yeah, okay. And um, next thing I know, I was getting into project management, program management, and it just took off from there. Cool. Um, I've been I've been a, an operations leader. I've been a customer support guy. I've been um, a, a regional manager. I'm managing um, a, a significant amount of the the North uh, East United States right now. And uh-huh. uh, I'm working with over 180 different customers and vendors, um, depending on me and, and and the team that I work with to make it happen every day. So, yeah. so that's kind of where my journey started. Okay. And, and, and you, uh, and, and 
you mentioned that your your goal you're looking to try to move towards a coaching environment and and all that right. with the leadership right but when you look back through your journey uh what are the, what would you say are the probably the two maybe defining moments in your journey that made you go focus on leadership kind of thing and all that are there are there two maybe one or two defining moments that sort of stand out to you that sort of planted the seeds for that kind of vision well let me let me read a quote here sure. um it's from it's one of colin powell's 101 quotes and um he basically says it ain't where you start in life it's where you end up okay and what you did along the way there so, you go and I, I i tell you what i so respect him uh i was a as some, as some of the listeners probably know i i was a intelligence officer on an in, international counter drug operation and all of the reports that i sent out went to him every day and i didn't realize that till i got back home so i so yeah, but yeah, it is. It's it's where you fin- it's where you end up. It's where you finish. Yeah. And so looking at that and talking about leadership, if I could take a few minutes or so. Sure. Um, when you look at the word leadership, um, it, it the, the the dictionary uh, the um, description of what a leader is or the definition mm-hmm. is that uh, it's a it's an action of leading a team of people mm-hmm. um, or a group of people or an organization right so now when i look at the word leadership i see not one word but two words i okay. see leader and i see ship now i mm-hmm. grew up in the east coast on basically across the street from a marina in the atlantic ocean wow plenty of boats that <laughs> the, the the marina and the boat yard was my playground that's there what you I go. Did. There you go. Well, I would go over there every day and walk around, look at the boats. Sometimes there'd be some guys over there letting me get on the boats. There was a boat manufacturer. And one thing I noticed about a boat is, um, or a ship is what they call it. Yeah. Is that uh, a ship is designed um, to, to, to operate on water under, under calm conditions, under extreme conditions. Every once in a while, it's a little ruffle, a little rumble here or there. It's designed to carry people to a certain place, Mm -hmm. but it must be steered to where it wants to go. Because believe it or not, a ship, if you let it just go where it wants to go, it won't go anywhere. Yeah, It will just sit there and go around and round in circles Mm -hmm. until something happens to give it direction. And that's what leadership means. It means that you have to have someone to steer the process to get it to where it needs to go, in my mind. Okay. So thinking of that and thinking about all the things and experiences that I want that I went through that I wanted to share it, the hardest part was how am I going to communicate this? What kind of leader am I going to be? Cool. You have my compliments on that being one of your first questions. Yeah. What kind of leader am I going to be? So... I look back at my experiences over the years. um, I've seen a lot of leaders, a lot Mm -hmm. of people that call themselves leaders. Let's put it that (laughs) way. I'll I'll go with you on that. (laughs) I've seen a lot of leadership models. And Mm -hmm. we talked about this the other day, you know, who made the biggest impact. I said John F. Kennedy um, and also Colin Powell to to an extent. Mm -hmm. Um, But there there I've noticed over the years, there's two kinds of leaders or leaderships. Mm-hmm. There's a 180 and a 360. Now, yeah, let me explain you, that. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Let me explain that. A 180 leader is usually the guy, he's only going to go so far. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's going to, most of his experience is, comes from a book. He was chosen for the position because he aligned himself with somebody that, that they thought, well, he looks like me, so he'll do what I want to do. He can say the right words. He can say the right words. He's a a micromanager, hates conflict, avoids conflict, um, doesn't care about his people, and has a team that's probably scared to death of him. Mm -hmm. Um, And usually he has to remind them that he's the one that's in charge. Yeah, It's interesting. When you go back to some of the Greek 
terminology from the Greek language. The the word that refers to that, and you're right, because I brought that up too. Uh, the word that refers to that talks about a play actor and hypocrite, you know, and, and not, mm -hmm. yeah, so you're right. So keep, sorry about that, but keep going. Yeah, very no, interesting. No, no worries, no worries. Um, so now let's go to the 360 leader. Yeah. Okay. So a 360 leader is a guy that, yeah, he reads books, but most of his experiences come from experiences and most of them are failures. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that he became a 360 later is you got to find a way to correct that failure. Mm -hmm. You got to find a way to get the ship to go where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he uses tactics like building up the team, mm -hmm. consistently coaching the team, finding out which members of the team can help steer the boat and getting mm -hmm. them the resources and everything that they need so if he's not there to steer the boat they can okay and that's important now i'll tell you a story here about a young lady that i had a position open a couple years ago i was yeah. working as an operations manager and they wanted me to build this team mm -hmm. but five of the well we had six members four of the six members were worthless and and i had to take them they were mm -hmm. worthless. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, two of the team members were new to the environment. So one of them I actually had a chance to hire. This mm -hmm. young lady was working in our supply section for years and managing the heck out of it. I mean, she had a process that was so good and so flawless, and her boss never took advantage of that. Every day it was do this, do that, mm -hmm. do it my way. I want it this way. And she would literally go in and look at it and say, this isn't going to work. And she would use, she would, she would find a way to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I want somebody like that on my team, first of all. Mm -hmm. So when she came over, she says, well, what do I do? I said, well, what we're, we're, we're going to do is we're going to tailor this position to fit your skills, but is there anything else you want to do? She says, well, I want my Six Sigma. I want to learn more about data. I want to learn more about Excel. So we gave her all of those tools. Eight months later, I lost her because my boss moved into another position and took her with her. Yeah, yeah. And she's still there today making it happen. She's mm -hmm. irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. um, she is. She took all of that knowledge, all of that coaching, and she became a winner. And she basically is the backbone of what they're doing right now. Without her, they fail. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's a good story to tell because, of course, she raised her pay level three times more than what they what she, what she they were paying her. And mm -hmm. um, she is now a, a professional. She's a professional now. She has yeah. all of that. So, yeah. And she knows how to do, how to give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. So, the second story I have is uh, a gentleman who, when I took this job, I had 16 guys that were, I was managing the whole Southwest of the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, this guy, when I came in, everybody said he's not worth it. He's a liar. They branded him. He couldn't do anything. He messes everything up. And so him and I had a conversation. He had some things he had to do. He was running from doing it, but we sat down and finally I had to put pen to paper and say, look, I'm going to put you on a, 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 a improvement program, but we're going to outline what you need to do. And mm -hmm. I'm going to help you through every step so you learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, we got past that step. We still had some issues. And so we did a one on one confidentially what's going on. Mm -hmm. And what we found out was the type of work we were giving him, the way we were utilizing him was putting him in a state of depression. Mm -hmm. So what I decided to do was I said, I believe that you want to be busy all the time. I believe you want to do A, B, and C. And when we put him in that position, he became the top employee. He's still the top guy now. I gave him training. I gave him coaching. I gave him mentoring. I took the door off my office for him, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 
you just walk in tell me what you want what you need and we'll make it happen yeah if i get in trouble and he became the top employee yeah in just a few months he knocked it out of the park Mm -hmm. so now when you see that and you look at that and you say if i'm going to be a leader i want my team to be able to play the game Mm -hmm. for instance you look at bill belichick bill belichick is being recognized as a guru a genius and all that yeah but without tom brady it didn't work with work too well yes and he didn't put a tom brady behind tom brady yeah to begin with so at the end of the day we recognize him for everything that he does but tom brady came into the nfl virtually slow Mm -hmm. not physically gifted but he had something up here and the new england patriots and belichick they gave him what he needed a, a offensive coordinator who was right on point with him yeah and they worked through it and they won six super bowls Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being a leader is not being the boss. It's not being the guy at the top. It's not being um, putting fear in employees. Your employees within That's two right. to three years after you're coaching them done, you should be bringing in a new team because they should be moving on. You should be preparing mm-hmm. them to take your job so that mm-hmm. you can go move on and take somebody else's job. Not, not you know, physically, but yeah things should be moving because organizations are gonna they're not gonna grow when you got fear and employees because they'll fall into a rut and you'll only get this much out of them when you should be getting this much Mm -hmm. and they'll give you stuff that when you got a team running like that they'll give you stuff that you didn't even think about hey boss you know i came i saw this today and i took care of it just wanted to let you know and now that's something else we can add to our toolbox, mm. you know, but you people should always be moving on and moving ahead through you. It starts with you as the leader mm-hmm. to make them future leaders because you're not going to be there forever. You got to set these guys up for life, period. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, for, and for the organization's value, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like to think about the organization's value because they pay us and we work there. But what about the family side of it, too? What about his kids? Thank, you know what? That's a good point. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. You give him some tools that, you know, he can take home and, you know, he can use those with his kids. I mean, that's what I did with my kid. That yeah. when I, Every tool that I learned, I sat my kid down and we talked and we went through it and I showed him. And 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 he mm-hmm. did he did exactly what he what he was supposed to do. And he's moving up, moving up, moving up. His 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 boss, his his organization realize he has value, and he's mm-hmm. just he's continuing to keep add to that toolbox. Yeah, and that's what yeah. you want to do in life with anybody that you meet, that you're talking to, that's struggling, or anything. You want to give them something that they can add to their toolbox, and uh, you know it, it's that's what it is. It's uh, we've got this thing. Uh, this group I work with in Grand Prairie, and we we call it pass it on. Mm-hmm. It's not literally just passing things on. It's yeah. setting people up for life. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if this country did more of it, we would be in such a better, beautiful place if mm-hmm. we set each other up for a win instead yeah. of just you know having a guy that's a figurehead there. That's, that's yeah. you know. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting, yeah, because that is that is true. It's not about dictating and pointing fingers and just patting myself on the back. Right. You know, one of the things that I, in fact, I even, uh, Casey Armstrong on the radio show earlier today actually meant it, mentioned it again. He said uh, he's so appreciative because what I've said is, you know, after I take my last breath, 20 years down the road, I don't, it doesn't bother me if people don't remember my name. But what I want is that they remember maybe one thing that I said or one thing insight that I brought out that made a difference in their life. And, um, you know, kind of like you're sort of talking about there. And I got to tell you with what you're saying, some of the more valuable conversations that I've had uh, in my life is when I had a five minute conversation with somebody. And, and so, yeah, it makes, it makes a difference, but that's what leaders do. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've got countless numbers of stories like this where I've had conversations and that's, that's what drew me to, well, maybe I should just be a career coach because Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, you know, I I know a couple of kids that I talked to a couple of years ago, one kid was seriously in trouble and 
And I told him, I said, you, you've got to face this and then you've got to set yourself up. We did it. We went through a couple of things and I, mm -hmm. I didn't see him for about, I don't know, five or six years. Yeah. The next time I saw him, he was working for a telephone company. He saw me and just gave me the thumbs up and just looked at me. And I, knew, <laughs> and I, knew. I knew right then and there, okay, everything we talk about, it sunk in. There it you go, man. There you go. And it worked. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, there's a guy I go to church with. Years ago when I did my, when I was doing my master's, I was on him. I said, look, man, you need to do your master's. You need to get to the next level. No, I'm comfortable. I'm good. I'm comfortable. I'm good. Mm -hmm. and he came to my graduation. He saw it out there. And he, next thing I know, he was, uh, he was finishing his master's. Wow. And, and now he's just all worldwide, all over the world. He's all over the place doing, doing big stuff. And, cool. and that's what you want people to do when you're talking to them or you're leading them. You want to lead them to the next level. You don't want them staying there 10 years with you. And, you know, well, I've been working for him for 10 years. If, yeah. you, if he's been working for you for 10 years and you've been working for somebody else for 10 years, okay, you guys are just sitting there waiting for the doors to close because it's not going <laughs> to go anywhere. It's there not going to go anywhere. You got to open it and step forward, you know, kind of thing. No two ways about it. Yeah, and not be afraid or not be worried about things. I've, I've failed so much it hasn't been funny. But mm -hmm. I've also had a few successes that have made greatly made up over those failures three times over. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be the person that I am now. When I left home, I left with seven bucks in my pocket, a hole in my shoe, and pneumonia. Wow. And, and, you know, and all these years later, um, here I am totally on the other side of where I was at. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So, you know, life is, it, it really is about giving back and, and it is about helping and watching other people grow. Um, you know, it, it, it's, I mean, you owe it to yourself. As There's a saying that says much is expected, uh, much, is, much is expected from those who have given a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, so if you've been given something, you ought to be able to give it back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just to give yourself a pat on the back, as you're saying correctly. No. So it's about no. just the impact that is with their lives and their journey. No. Well, I'll tell you what, that that's awesome. Let me just uh, 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 allow you the opportunity real quick, because I know the time's getting a little bit close. Sure, sure. Uh, you have my compliments on what you're doing. I know you've been involved with aviation companies and things like that, too. And mm -hmm. and the. Um, uh, anything you want to share about where your journey is going, going forward, anything that you'd like to, to share before we sure. uh, close up. So, so right now, as we talked about it, um, this is actually the first step in me moving towards my career coaching. I'm uh, working on getting that uh, LLC together and just jotting right. down what I want it to look like. Um, I'm also a musician, so I'm a jazz musician. I play all the instruments. You and have I my actually, compliments on that. <laughs> I actually, I actually um, have a CD on all the major streams, and uh, oh, I just, cool. I just got notified yesterday a third radio station is picking up for a rotation. So, wow, um, cool. th that's something I always wanted to do. And um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I have a two-year-old, almost three-year-old granddaughter, and we're starting to see those signs now, those little leadership traits. Wow. Um, so and it and it all really comes back to my grandfather in the Bahamas. Um, he was the first person that learned how to read in the Bahamas, and guess what he did? He wow. taught everybody else how to read. Cool, cool. So, that's awesome, brother. That, that's awesome. And uh, well, I tell you what. Any real quick last thoughts uh, in the next minute or two that you'd like to share with anybody before we close up? You have my compliments on just everything you've shared so far. I've just I would just say if I had to say something to somebody or a crowd or something, I would say there's three things. First of all, believe in yourself. Second of all, you're going to have a lot of problems, but keep going forward. And third of all, it has to happen if you keep those things in mind. It mm -hmm. has to happen, not it will happen. It has to happen. Take advantage when your opportunity comes forward. Don't worry about failing. Don't worry about being the top guy. Learn, learn, experience, experience, and it will happen. You know, it's interesting. You have my compliments on that. This happened about, I think, about 10 or 11 years ago. But Dave Jewett, who's the founder of a, a coaching group called Your One Degree, 
and I were sitting, there was a conference up in uh, uh, Tulsa where, where he lived. And I was up for the conference and I spent the night in his house. And we were up about six o'clock in the morning sharing some tea and stuff. And one of the things that he said, he said, I got to tell you something, Randy. I said, what's that? And he said, I so appreciate that you don't quit. You, you learn what you need to learn. You keep stepping forward and you don't quit. Very aligned with kind of what you just said uh, on that, because you're right. That's critical. So, well, I'll tell you what, I know, uh, I know our time is kind of getting to the end here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been an honor to have you on. It's been an honor to uh, com uh, have a conversation on the phone with you too, Dennis. Uh, it'd be great to just stay in touch periodically. Yes, and, sir. Uh, and uh, maybe have a cup of coffee or something together oh, when you're absolutely. out and stuff. And uh, we'll look forward to do it. But it's been an honor and privilege to have you on. I appreciate what you talked about. And uh, we'll look forward to maybe doing it again. I appreciate that. Uh, and um, anytime. Anytime, anytime you need me to, 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 to have a conversation, I'm always willing to have a conversation about coaching. Um, and I appreciate this opportunity more than you'll ever know. So thanks again. Um, have a great day and good luck with the, uh, with the business. And I'm sure that we're going to have that cup of coffee pretty soon. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll look forward to it, my friend. You have a great one. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Take care now. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.